Hi, my stitching friends. Welcome to my floss tube channel or stitchy tube. My name is Amanda May and I am a cross stitch enthusiast and artist and I'm so happy that you're here with me today for my 37th episode of floss tube. Officially spring here in Maryland. Ah! The forsythia is blooming. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness. I love it. I love it so much. Okay. I want to show you this week a bunch of books that I got at a local library book sale. And then I have a couple things that I finished. Well, not cross stitch finished, but craft finished. <laughs> and I just wanted to share a couple tips and tricks. I have a few things that I got for haul that I would love to share. And just, you know, hang out and talk for a little bit. I would love it if you stuck around and we talk, counted cross stitch. <laughs> I do have some save the stitches this week and I'm so excited about it. I originally didn't think that I would have any Save the Stitches to show you this week, apart from pulling things out of my laundry <laughs> basket bin that I've shown you last time. I have some more goodies that still need to be cleaned, cross stitch, needlepoint, otherwise, all those goodies, uh, but I didn't want to reach into that bin yet. <laughs> and I'm happy to report that I went on a little expedition trip and got a couple pieces and I'm so excited to show them to you. I, let's get started. <laughs> Should we start with Save the Stitches? Yes, let's do that. Okay. I went to one of the thrift stores in the area and I was looking at the linens first for Easter coming up, I wanted to see about finding something springy or maybe if sometimes there's the counted cross stitch or embroidered table linens actually available for sale. Either they're pristine and overpriced or they have stains or what have you. I mean, it runs the gamut. So I started looking there and there was nothing. And then I all of a sudden out of the corner of my eye, I saw a frame and I saw some stitching. I'm like, ooh, what's that? And here we go. Here's one of my Save the Stitches for this week. Oh, as I, the glare. I want to say this is a Paula Vaughn piece and I have not done my full research on it yet. And it's got this spinning wheel and the quilt. I, I'm here somewhere, I promise. Hi! <laughs> it's got the basket, the spool of thread. The person uh, dated it 1990. There's the water basin. It's stitched on like a cream white Ada fabric. It's got a double mat and it was professionally framed and stretched beautifully. And I was really excited to get this piece. I don't know if you can see without the, the clear, the big spinning wheel look and the stitching. And just wait, it wasn't just that piece. I got another piece by the same stitcher, the same artist, it's framed, and there is on Ada again, stitched, and it's the rocking chair on the front porch, and the other chair with the gardening hat, gardening hat, <laughs> and I just, it's really lovely, there's even like the spool of thread here that got unwound, the detailing. Now, all of this is Ada. And there's just the straight stitching here to make the, I want to say it's shiplap. Maybe uh, the, the, the look of the, the siding of the house. And it's got the quintessential late 1980s color palette, the blues and the pinks. But I think it, it looks rather, rather lovely. The, the planks on the ground here are stitched in the back in back stitch and like I said I believe this is Paula Vaughn but you all can correct me if I am wrong 
I have some of her books and so I actually went into my stash trying to find this pattern and of course you all know that I could google search it and maybe, <laughs> and maybe find the answer but what's the fun in that <laughs> so I pulled up my memory I got this book actually at the library sale this past week so I was looking in here the romance of Paula Vaughn to see if this indeed was the same designer the same book she did Paula Vaughn did a lot of porch scenes uh, practically full coverage you know sitting on the front porch I think that she must have had some sort of good memories of like porch scenes and she also does a lot of the dressing scenes the dressing room scenes which I find really interesting I I don't know of a whole lot of people that leave like their historic outfits out on display um, here's like the rose and the fan but this is very late 1980s Paula Vaughn she does a bunch of different projects in this book I liked this one for spring it's got the gardening cart and the watering can oh my nails look like a hot mess I did some crafty stuff oh and I was out in the garden this week this weekend I Oh my gosh and my daffodils are blooming and I I worked hard <laughs> after you've kind of hibernated over the winter where it's too cold to go really go anywhere or do anything <laughs> to get out on the first couple of warm days <laughs> you forget that there are muscles that you haven't used in a while <laughs> I always liken it to the first time I ever tried snowboarding and I was sore in places I and muscle groups and joint things that I you know you have 200 plus bones in your body <laughs> after that first snowboarding adventure I felt like I felt every single bone <laughs> well gardening while clearly not as rigorous as snowboarding <laughs> I still had that feeling of uh, exhaustion <laughs> anyway here's this is another one of those dressing scenes with the singer sewing machine and I just love it so that's the the Paula Vaughn book I picked up those were the two save the stitches and on my way out I was looking well at the cash register I'm waiting to check out and pay my money and I look over to the side and there's a table and it says everything on this table is one dollar and I double checked it I'm like, what one dollar what so I started like looking and I found something I got for one dollar I have stuff stacked oopsie daisy okay for one dollar I got this piece I was so excited it's one of the trays but it's also you could hang it and it says bless this house and it's stitched I want to say that is like 10 count like burlap it's a very heavy duty large weight and it's got the little bird motif I mean you could probably stitch this up in under four hours five hours maybe with the big count and it looks like they used six strands the whole of DMC so I mean it's it's hefty but I just thought it was really neat and I felt like the tray itself was worth more than a dollar but nobody nobody bought no one wanted it no one saw the the value in it except me so I said yes please and bought that for a dollar I also picked up some ribbon and I really liked this ribbon this was not a dollar but it was in the like the craft section uh, let me see if you can see I've never worked with this kind of ribbon before so I liked the look of it it's got it's gonna goes goes like a like a windy river I don't know what I'm gonna do with it but if I see ribbon that I like and it's vintage I like to pick it up I I am the enthusiastic haberdashery lady or ribbon lady show me the trims 
show me all this stuff. I loved seeing everyone's haul from Market that included all of the Lady Dot Creates chenille trims, the pom poms. I have never met a pom pom I didn't like. <laughs> Ribbon. I also got in the same thing, I got this really cool ruler and I just love the bright colors in the ruler. I, there's always a time to measure. I love math. <laughs> really fun and bright. All right, and then the coolest thing that I got off the dollar table. Are you ready? <laughs> this segment is part of my, the creative crafting containers. Here we go. Ah. For one dollar, I got this really awesome, guess what it is? All of you know what this is. I, you're all very, you know, you're in the know. This is a silverware box, minus the silver. <laughs> and I immediately grabbed this for a dollar and the lady's like, what are you gonna do with that? Well, let me tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna store some beautiful sewing accessories, stitching accessories in this box. I'm gonna clean up the top, and I don't know if I am going to remove the felt lining out of here or leave it as is. There are some beautiful photos you can see on Pinterest of the historic Victorian presentation boxes that young girls and boys had for their stitching and their sewing on display and they're the beautiful boxes and you open them up and it had all of the supplies everything neat and nice well I thought why not revamp this into a really nice 21st century 2019 presentation box using an upcycled material. The box is lovely. I'm not going to paint it or anything. It's got some scuffs, but I call those character marks. <laughs> and again, I, I've seen some really cool ways of you take this, this piece out and you can recover it. Someone had also, I had seen someone actually put a large cross stitch finish on the top of one of these boxes. I'm not sure if I'm going to put anything on top of this or if I'll have all the goodness inside. A dollar. Think about things, and again, I am coming from a place of privilege. I spent $10, like stuff at the dollar table. I mean, and that, I understand $10 can be a lot. So I'm not trying to say, just be frivolous with your money. Many of us are on stitching budgets. I give myself a $20 per week budget. That includes at the thrift stores, that includes my personal stuff. Like if I see a shirt that I like or a necklace that I like, <laughs> it, that's, that's not, it's all inclusive. <laughs> a $20 budget per week. And it also includes if I am going to pick up sweets for my sweethearts in the car, like a sprinkled donut or <laughs> if we stop for an ice cream cone or something. So that is also part of the budget. And I understand that a lot of us can't do that. So I want you to know that I don't want to be flippant and say, oh, I've just you know, th throwing the money, <laughs> money around. All right. I did stop on Friday and I was looking around at a little antique shop and they had some scissors and they were marked 10 cents a piece, 10 cents a piece. <gasps> and I said yes please and they came home with me now this 
I am not sure what type of scissor this is for. It's got the angled, but I liked that it, it almost looks like it was made um, by a blacksmith. There's no markings on it and the scissors are a little rusty. And then this, this pair is, is stamped made in Germany. Again, 10 cents a piece, very dull. But I thought with my spoon racks that I'm about to paint, that I'm revamping the spoon racks to make into my scissor holder, I had made, I had lamented that I didn't have enough scissors and I got a second pair of scissors, the red ones, for my birthday. And now I have two pairs of display scissors. <laughs> Again, these blacksmith looking ones, no marks, and I'm the angle. So these, these might not be, I don't know what these are for, <laughs> but I got some more scissors. And that is my crafty haul for this week. My finish for this week was, do you see this? I made the wreath. I followed Priscilla and Chelsea's. Can you see it? Okay, there it is. Okay. <laughs> I followed Priscilla and Chelsea's tutorial using the straw wreath. I believe I got the 18 inch, 14 inch wreath. And then I got the super pack, the family pack, 500 of the coffee filters. And what I did was I had the filter, I folded it in half, folded it in half again, and then used my, as I drop it, my hot glue, hot glue, hot glue gun to put this on. And what I did is I folded, I would say like 100 at a time, and I put them in, a, in my green bucket. And as my small children allowed, <laughs> I would turn on my hot glue gun and start adding to it this took me I'm embarrassed to say I had this partially completed for about six weeks I know but it's done <laughs> I just need to add a decorative ribbon Yankee Creek stitcher uh, Jerry was saying hey before you finish make sure you use like wire to put on the back of it so you attach it so when you hang the ribbon the ribbon will be purely decorative and you're not putting strain on the coffee filters and crushing it and I felt like that was a good tip for me to have because I hadn't finished my frame so I got at one of the big box stores just some floral wire it's small enough it's sturdy it's sturdy but it's easy enough to you can use your house scissors your non craft scissors to cut if you don't have wire cutters it's thin enough that you can use that and what I did I, I you know what I'm just gonna show you <laughs> uh, without hopefully I don't ruin this okay oh okay and what I did was I wrapped it around and made a the hanger right here so now all I need to do is add the decorative ribbon and it's done my tip for the wreath is if you have one and again I understand that we don't all have this stuff lying around if you have a lazy Susan I highly recommend if you are a crafter and you're gluing stuff and doing stuff, I highly recommend getting a Lazy Susan. And I was able to set this on my table, and as I'm gluing, I can just rotate this around. So instead of rotating myself, I am able to sit and rotate the Lazy Susan. I know cake decorators use this a lot, but I just wanted to do just a, a, a brief little friendly reminder to any crafters out there that if you hadn't thought about it, you can pick up this Lazy Susan. I believe I got it for $12. It was less than $15 new. 
Of course, I would love to find one at the thrift store, but <laughs> we can't always find exactly what we're looking for. And again, I absolutely love it. I'm super happy. My tips are, uh, of course, Jerry, the Yankee Creek Stitcher, suggested the floral wire. I concur. And I'm adding to the tutorial of the tutorial of the tutorial to say, use your Lazy Susan. If you need to pull it out of your <laughs> kitchen or dining room, you know, crafting, you gotta do it, right? What you do in the name of crafting. <laughs> All right, do you wanna look at my books that I got at the library book sale? Okay, full disclosure, I bought a bag of books, a whole bag, and they gave me a, like a reusable tote <laughs> because they were so heavy, I would have probably broken the paper bags. All right, are you ready? I feel like I scored, I'm just saying. All right, I'm gonna take a drink, I'm gonna show you this. Okay, my first one is America's Best Cross Stitch. I saw the cover of this, hello, sunflowers. Immediately, yep. Full disclosure, I bought all the cross stitch books at the book sale. So if you're wondering, do I discriminate against cross stitch? No, if I see it <laughs> and it's a good price, I usually buy it unless I already own it in which case I guess I'll leave it for somebody else I need to get another bookshelf I am curating my cross stitch collection and I am fully aware <laughs> that I am in the accumulation phase of this hobby so here is that sampler and they show with the sunflower there's also, I thought these were really precious designs for the nursery. The little kitty cat, you could make that as a pillow instead of a mobile, but they had those. And this week was a hard parenting week for me, so it was really nice to be able to sit and just look at all of this beautiful stuff. I love these 3D houses, and I would love to learn how to finish, to make and finish one of these. There's a, a pattern... Uh, designer cross stitch designer out of the UK and she specializes in the 3d and I love it this cross stitch samplers I didn't find anything in here that j totally jumped out at me but the squirrels on the bunnies hello adorbs the next one is Merry Christmas in cross stitch and I know Michelle Garrett Bindi Stitchy made a comment that she typically always picks up the Christmas cross stitch magazines and books when she sees them because there's always phenomenal things for, you know, Santas or the stocking pattern stuff that usually only gets put out in maybe in the books. So there are some really lovely like non-denominational like Christmas Christmas scenes without it screaming, you know, Judeo-Christian for those who are not. Uh, and like this, look at this, isn't this lovely? It's got the celestial moon and stars. The colors kind of look like a Joker or a Jester theme, like Renaissance theme, but it could still translate. And then here are the Nutcracker ornaments, the Rat King and I was watching Sarah King, Our Stitching Kingdom, and she was joking that she got married 10 years ago before having kids, but if she knew now what, if she knew then what she knows now, she wouldn't have gotten married during dancing season, like dance competition season. And I was cracking up because I also, uh, I danced, I was a ballet dancer for 13 years. And the big season for me, I didn't dance competitively because I am not a competitive <laughs> person. I, but I did the Nutcracker every year. So there's the Rat King. And fun fact about me, I played the Nutcracker one year. And I wore my hat. It was um, the Nutcracker Prince hat. It was made out of one of those large popcorn tins that you get at Christmas time you cut out around and so I danced wearing a popcorn tin 
on stage and sword fighting the Rat King on stage. <laughs> I did that. I wish, well, maybe I have pictures. Okay, I gotta make a note. If I find any photos that didn't get burned in the fire this last year at my mother's house, if I have my Nutcracker photos where I was the Nutcracker Prince, I will share them. <laughs> anyway, I digress. <laughs> the next I found quilts, patchworks, and samplers, an encyclopedia. Now this was primarily quilts and fabrics but I love quilts and fabrics. <laughs> Look at this for summer. Look at that little quilt. It's got the chairs and the, and the umbrellas. Love it. Lakeside umbrellas, all that stuff. They have the stitches and a lot of this, unfortunately, a lot of stuff here. The color palettes are dated and, but there's still a wealth of information in these older, um, in these older books. Here they show a couple of the samplers and then the corresponding charts with the borders and the houses. It doesn't hurt to look and if you can if you're going to a book sale where they have you know three for a dollar or where you could potentially pay less than a dollar for a book for a couple patterns I mean it could be worth it. <laughs> All right the next one is uh, cross stitch from the Country Garden. This one had some, some nice, some nice ones, some very dated ones. Uh, let me, I, I swear I marked it. Okay, here we go. I liked this autumn bird with the flower foliage. Obviously, you don't need to make it into a pillow and you could take those ruffles right on out of there. But I liked the autumn bird, the chickadee. And then I'm like on a strawberry kick. Here are strawberries. Again, you could just stitch just this one little one and not the whole pillow. The next book I got was The Better Homes and Gardens Christmas Crafts. And of course they have the creepy clown. Cause what doesn't say Christmas like the creepy clown? All right, <laughs> what did I find? Yes, here it is. Look at this stocking. Look at that little doll baby. Oh my goodness, those little bunnies and their little hats. Now this is charted for needle point. However, you can read the chart for cross stitch too. It doesn't, just make adjustments, pick your favorite count of fabric and stitch it. I mean, you could stitch it on like a navy blue Ada, so you're not stitching all the blue, right? Navy blue Ada here, and then fill it in, or conversely, you could do a white Ada where the snow is just white, and then you're stitching all the blue. You don't have to make this full coverage. And then look at those little bunnies. I mean, so cute. I've got, we've got bunnies everywhere in our yard, like <laughs> running around, but I loved that. and. This book literally is so old, it, it just fell apart in my hands. Okay, whoopsie daisy. Reason it was on sale. Okay, the next thing I found did not have any cross stitch. However, Mary is iconic and a lot of people really like her stuff. And look at this, look at the little paper dolls with the little pockets and the paper doll fabric. I have a really cute paper doll quilt. Well, it's it's a quilt with the quilt paper doll. Anyway, I think I've shown you before. Maybe I'll show it next time. Okay, and then <laughs> I found the cross stitch designs here and it's a track, it, they let you know that they're attractive designs. <laughs> and I, of course, on my hunt for all the carrots and radishes. Oh, look, I could make my own carrot and radish purse because spring would not be complete without a carrot radish onion purse. And 
<laughs> the onions, now every time I see onions, I think of Gary of the Sunshine Stitchers. He also, I believe, is the Garium Toten bag gentleman. And he was stitching an onion pattern and a pepper pattern, and it was so cute. So now every time I see an onion, I think of Gary. But the radish, I just love it. And then there was a cute fairy tale pattern here in pastels, and I thought about one of my kids. They turned this into a tote bag, so I believe it's stitched on 11 count Ada. But I really liked in the center here, there's a little girl with the bunnies, and I thought that was so precious for spring. And the last, and all of these are charted and they give the directions, the finishing directions. I, I promise there's a, oh no, that was just the pattern at the end. I thought there was more than that in this book. I'm sorry. Um, March, March, looking back to childhood, all the cute little things and then like the suspenders. So precious. And the last book I am showing you today is an American folk artist book. And I wanna thank Floss Tube so much for introducing me to the wonderful world of, can you see my shaker boxes? My, I have shaker boxes now, thanks to all of you. I have shaker boxes. I'm learning about a Pennsylvania fractor art and all of the beautiful American folk art and I thank you for that. And look at this hooked rug. There's a pattern and everything in here for the hooked rug and punch needle. This gentleman has a beautiful collection of work. And most of what is shown here is showcased in needlepoint, not cross stitch like the lighthouse here. But I really liked some of the punch needle here at, for patriotic fans. There's punch needle here, and then rug hooking here of the watermelon flag. I love it, and they chart it. It's charted in Gentle Arts, and the pattern for that here. Three cheers for the red, white, and blue, and it's charted for Gentle Art. I just, I love it. I had never explored the wonderful world of punch needle and I just I again that's on my goal this year to learn punch needle oh here's hole in the barn door quilt here's a pattern for that project I love this horse they don't have that horse though in this I wish they did I love that and oh my gosh I just and then I saw of course the game boards and I always think of Pam of Pam and stuff in the game board stuff and I just want to make all of the things. <laughs> Again, thank you all so much for joining me this week and my Save the Stitches goodies. I am so grateful that you stopped by to visit with me where we talk about stitching and counting cross stitch and being frugal and upcycling and just know that I appreciate you, you matter. And I can't wait to visit with you next week. I hope you have a beautiful week. Take care.